Hello, my name is Greg. I'm a sailor and a woodworker. I'm creating this YouTube channel with three goals in mind. First, follow me as I search for an offshore cruising sailboat that is capable of being single-handed. Second, keeping traditional seamanship alive. And third, follow me on various sailing and cruising excursions. Before I get into more detail about the channel, let me explain where the name came from. I'm a bagpiper, and the various types of tunes played on the bagpipe can be marches, strats bays, reels, and tunes like Over the Sea to Sky and Amazing Grace that are called slow airs. I felt this was particularly appropriate for a sailboat, and will be naming my sailboat slow air with a silhouette of a bagpiper as the logo. I stopped playing for a while and recently started up again, and at some point I may even post a video of me playing the pipes. Time will tell. My search for a sailboat will in all likelihood be a convoluted path. I do not expect to find the right boat at the right price initially, and will probably go through a few boats until I settle upon the final vessel. My plan is to scour boatyards in the New England area. As I've driven around during the summers, I've noticed many boats spend their summer on the hard sailor's term for not in the water since land is hard and water is soft. Many of these boats have covers in tatters and look like they have been seriously neglected. This brings many questions to mind. First, are they no longer interested in the boat? And might they sell? Many owners have a strong attachment to their boat and although they are no longer using the boat, they can't bear to let go of the dream catching them at the right time and presenting them with a concept for their boat may convince them that it's time to let go. Secondly, is the boat worth anything? How much time and effort will it take to resurrect the boat and what will it be worth when all the work is done? Many of these boats should be moved from the boatyard to a landfill, but getting the owners to admit that or pay for it is extremely difficult and something most of them don't want to admit. Third, how long will it take to fix and sell the boat, if it's not the final boat that I plan on keeping? I would expect I'm going to rejuvenate a few boats before I've worked my way up to the size and design that I ultimately want. I've been thinking about this quite a while. I mean, there are opportunities to buy uh, boats at auction that have been damaged in storms, and I've watched multiple YouTube channels where people have fixed up boats that have been seriously damaged. And that looks like way too much work. Um, there are a couple of YouTube channels where people have, you know, fixed up boats with minor amounts of damage. Um, and again, they're paying a higher price for the initial boat, um, putting a lot of time and effort and elbow grease into it, and ultimately getting a really nice boat. Um, you know, but they're starting at a higher point. Uh, I'm trying to do this not necessarily on a shoestring, but I certainly want to have my initial investment in the boat a lot lower. Um, so that's why I'm looking at these older boats, probably are going to need engine work, they're going to need mechanical systems, um, plumbing systems, everything, you know, complete overhauls from stem to stern on the boat um, in order to bring it up to today's standard of living. Um, and probably replacing electronics and everything else, which almost any boat you're going to have to come across that at some point. One of the challenges that I have living up here in New England is our sailing season is short and the outdoor working season is only slightly longer. While some projects can be done under cover during the cold winter months, fiberglass repair, painting and varnishing all need the warmer weather. Some projects that can be removed from the boat can be brought inside and I can work on them here in my workshop. So the boat project may not get started for a few months, since it is February and still relatively cold outside. Um, I have already started creating a list of boat yards within 20 miles, 50 miles, and 100 miles. And as soon as the weather cooperates, we'll start driving around and seriously looking at boats um, and trying to reach out to owners and see what the status is with these vessels. 
If anyone knows of a boat that is at least 35 feet long that may be looking for a new home, please let me know. The second part of this channel is going to be focusing on keeping traditional seamanship alive. Marine stores sell pre-spliced dock lines. Walk down the dock and look at how boats are tied up. I mean, it's sad to see the decline in sail and the growth of powerboat fleets. Many powerboaters assume that piloting a boat is the same as driving a car. Well, they both have a steering wheel. So, I will be posting numerous videos, you know, focusing on terminology, how to tie you know, the five or six line and knots that I think everyone should be able to know how to tie. I will demonstrate splicing and spend some time on navigation, dead reckoning, charting and plotting, and the basics of getting around in the water. While my focus is primarily on sailing, you know, power is very important. Most sailboats have an engine and a dinghy with an outboard. And how to operate a powerboat has some unique challenges many people don't understand. I mean, just go down to the local yacht club or marina on a Saturday and watch some of the boats coming into the dock. Finally, I'm going to post videos whenever I get out on the water, either for pleasure cruising or boat deliveries. It's taken me a little longer to get this channel up and running, and my first sailing trip will be posted as soon as I can, probably in a couple of weeks after this goes live. This is a trip last November, helping my 92-year-old mother sail her 34-foot catamaran from Florida to the Bahamas, where she lives aboard for the winter. That was an interesting trip with a Gulf Stream crossing and an overnight through the northern Abacos before we finally reached Hopetown on Elbow Key. In a couple of weeks, in March, my wife and I are heading back down to the Bahamas to spend 10 days lying on the beaches down there, cruising with my mother, and I'll get that video posted after we return. I'm filming this from my workshop. This is where the magic happens. I have a love of woodworking, but I consider myself a jack of all trades. I do plumbing, electrical, fiberglass repair, painting, and basically all the projects around the house, yard, watt, and water. I presently own two boats, a 19-foot center console Roballo with a 115 Yamaha, and a 15-foot Marshall Marine Sandpiper that I race during the summer. One project that in, is in the queue is rebuilding the carburetors from my outboard. I have both carbs on the bench behind me, and I have the rebuild kits. So that'll probably be one of the next videos I post as we strip down the carburetors, clean them up, and rebuild them in anticipation of this summer's season. As you can see from the shop behind me, I'm a little organized. My family thinks I'm OCD, and they may not be all wrong. I like to be organized in my work, but when I get into a project, the shop does not always look like this. Sometimes it can get downright messy. We'll give you a quick tour of the shop before we wrap this thing up. I hope you've enjoyed hearing about my plans, and that you'd like to come along for the ride. If you'd like to see more, hit the subscribe button to get a notification when I post a new video. And please hit the like button. The Slow Air website is under development and we'll have all the videos organized as they get posted. Would you expect anything less from me? Thank you for watching and I hope that you'll join me as I continue my pursuit for the sailing vessel Slow Air. So this is a quick tour of the workshop. I used to tell you these are most of my hammers, screwdrivers, and chisels. Uh, that cabinet up there is full of my long planes. Um, all the drawers down here are primarily plumbing, electrical, supplies, um, and you know, markers and rulers. Well, up on the bench. The project I was talking about, the carburetors for my outboard motor, and then a friend of mine has another carb that I've got to rebuild for one of the engines from his powerboat. Um, here are smaller hand planes, and at the top are all antique molding planes that will belong to my great grandfather. Here are primarily all of my hand saws. 
against this wall is my table saw and saw blades. Around the corner in there is my dust collection system. And it's really nice to have these two long benches to work as an in-feed and out-feed table for my chop saw. I'll shop back under there to try to keep the dust down. Against this wall, all my tools obviously are on mobile bases because a small shop, everything needs to roll around. There's my planer, drill press, pan saw, spindle sander, uh, shaper. All my clamps, because you can never have too many clamps. And then against the back wall are a lot of my smaller tools and all their cases. And then more storage, supplies, inventory of fasteners, clothes, screws, um, my charging station for all my cordless drills and grinders. And then this wall has got my lathe and my long bed jointer, as well as all my lumber storage. Got exotic woods up at the top, poplar, pine, stacked up out there. And then here is my work table. Got a couple of projects going on right now. One is making a new handle for my back saw. The other one is uh, replacing a couple of hands from the tower clock at my church. I do a little epoxy repair on my wife's pickleball racket. Not quite sure she said she hit her partner's paddle and put a crack in it or a little chip in it. And then the big rolling table. Um, tool chest underneath there, and a lot of other random tools. Um, my work top, about six feet long, three and a half feet wide. Maybe you can tell from the dots here. And again, more dots in that spot. That uh, This is a chunk of a bowling alley. Nice rock hard maple works quite well. has a nice flat surface for projects gluing up and whatever else needs to be done. So, that is my workshop. I hope you've enjoyed the quick tour and looking forward to getting into this project rebuilding the carburetors. Now, that there's an extra one thrown into the mix. should be interesting. So, if you like the video, please click like, click subscribe, subscribe to get uh, updates on new videos when they come out and uh, hope you've enjoyed this look forward to seeing you again goodbye